Oh, hey there. Welcome. Today's the big day. I'm going to be playing a $300,000 tournament at Aria Hotel and Casino with a lot of my friends, and I was just about to check out who I was going to be playing with today. Let's see what the table draw looks like. All right, table one, Tom Marquise, Matt Hyman, Christoph Vogelsang, Sam Soverol, Sergio Ido, and Arnie Rouge. I'm going to be mispronouncing a lot of names here today, I can tell you that, but I'm not at that table. Seems like a decent one to be at. A lot of players I don't really know too much about, to be totally honest with you, but uh, definitely a decent table. Wouldn't have mind being there. Table two, Lucky Chewy, Kerry Katz, Antonio Esfandiari, that guy, that guy, and Igor Kurganov. That seems like another decent table. Wouldn't mind being there as well. Table three. Now, this one actually looks real tough, guys. Phil Ivey, Seth Davies, Nick Pentrangelo, David Peters, Dan Smith, Isaac Haxton. That's the table of death. I am very, very much glad to not be at that one. In fact, in years past, I've ended up at tables sort of like this. Um, this is basically the worst case scenario if you are a poker player in the Super High Roller Bowl, but I'm sure they're going to have a great time. Table four, a uh, guy with the same name twice, Brandon Adams, Stephen Chidwick, Jake Schindler, John Andres, and Ben Tollery. And don't really know much about anyone at that table. Let's move on. Table five is a qualifier, which apparently some breaking news that I received earlier this morning will be true teller. Uh, certainly a soft spot to liven up the super high roller bowl, if you will. And he's going to be facing off against Jason Kuhn, Justin Bonomo, Byron Caverman, Adrian Mateos, and Kali Burns. N another table that I definitely would not want to be at. I think three and five are certainly the worst uh, value tables that there are here in the field. Table six, Kathy Lean, Dennis Blyden, Brian Rast, Bryn Kenny. Eric Seidel, Larry Greenberg, and maybe if Doug puts in a good word with someone, we can get Doug in seat uh, seat seven. Probably not going to happen. Probably the soft this table, I think, here in the tournament. Definitely a lot of value to be had. Um, and and by the way, guys, like you know, if you're one of the players at these tables, I'm not trying to insult anyone. Or am I? I'm not actually sure. But regardless, if there's an open seat. Let me know. I'm still not on any of these tables. Let's, let's move over to table seven. Stefan Sonsenheimer, Phil Helmuth, Dan Shack, Corey Aldemir, Bill Perkins, and Keith Tilston. It's starting to look like I'm going to be at the last table, given that I'm not at the first seven here. Another table, decent table to be at. Definitely a, a nice mix. And in fact, one of the best things about this event is that, you know, you get a, a solid mix of the uh, super grindy high stakes professionals and the uh, more recreational business guys, uh, which make it a, a more fun tournament in general, would be another table I wouldn't mind being at. I guess that means we're at table eight, which means Daniel Negreanu, Doug. Nice. Talal, Fedor, Andres, and Rayner are going to round this one out. So we basically have uh, half the table recreational people and half the table German, which is a really nice mix. And, you know, it's especially good to see some recreational players getting in there because with such low rake, it's just hard to justify for some of these guys. You know, I'm not sure if the drawings here are rigged, but if they are, I think I'm okay with it. I do have to say, though, I saw the live drawing last night, and uh, if I pay 300000 good dollars to be in a tournament, I just want my name read the same as all the other players. Is it so much to ask? The man, the myth, the legend, the creator, Mr. Influencer. El Jefe. Yeah, El Jefe. Carrie Katz. Byron, thank God for shot clocks. Caverman. <laughs> and recently on the big stage, winning a title, Mr. Big Cheese, Tom Marchese. All right, the silent assassin. Mr. David Peters, table three, seat four. This Next one I'll up, let you do. Whatever, Doug Polk, table <laughs> eight, seat two. It just seems so petty to be like that. And can you really imagine Daniel Negreanu being that? Pe Actually, yes. Yes, I can. That makes sense. I think the same thing is on everyone's mind right now. What am I going to wear? I just hope something good comes to me because right now I just, I got nothing, guys. I'm drawing a blank. At a table with this many chatter mouths, I'm a bit worried that the conversation might die down at some point, which is why I took the time to prepare some potential 
uh, conversational topics just in case things get a little bit dull. I'll give you a couple examples. For example, how about this weather we've been having lately? Because I know I've had quite the heater. No, it's not. It's not it doesn't really even make sense. Anyone into sports ball? Because how about those golden knights? You know, little sports for the, the people at the table who may or may not be into that. I really am not totally sure who may or may not be. Um, and then maybe things really die down. What do you guys think about blackface? Cool if your black friends say it's okay? That could be a good one, I think. If you guys want a sneak peek at the rest of the topics as well as uh, updates as I go along in the Super High Roller Bowl, you can follow me on Instagram. I will be logging my progress, my chips, all of that good stuff. Uh, Doug Polk Poker there as I go along. I want to talk about vlogging for a moment here because in, in well, at least last year, I vlogged this tournament. I vlogged the one drop. I'm not going to do that. I talked about this a little bit some uh, at some other point, but just to clarify why, um, I feel like when I'm playing such a high stakes buy-in, I don't like having to spend my breaks trying to do videos and stuff uh, because I feel like I'm, you know, it's such a stressful uh, and high stakes environment and, you know, you're being recorded and you're trying to play well and it's for a lot of money. In fact, this will be my biggest tournament ever. I'm probably going to have around 125K of my own action. Um, you know, I want to be able to focus and try and play well on it uh, rather than trying to just like get hand histories in on the breaks and, and, and try and record video. Maybe I could do like a video before the tournament, kind of like what I'm doing today. I'll talk about a couple hands in the future. Maybe if I run deep, I'll do something. But, uh, you know, the thing is, guys, like I want to be able to focus. Like this is super high stakes. This is the highest stakes thing that I play every year. Um, and, and I want to be able to play my A game. You know, this is an op awesome opportunity. This is a great tournament. Uh, all jokes aside, there is no rake. So it is extremely high value. Um, and, and honestly, it's exciting. Like really there's only one super high roller bowl. One drop is similar. It's a little different, but it is similar. So I guess like those two are comparable. Um, but the, the atmosphere of just a small field, high stakes buy-in that will be televised is cool stuff. And, and, and I want to be able to kind of appreciate that moment of focus rather than doing a vlog. I, I know that like you guys like those vlogs. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sure you can find other great vlogs out there. Nimi does a great job. A lot of other people out there doing doing a good job too. So uh, I'm going to be updating on Instagram. Maybe uh, I'll record a couple things here and there. Maybe not. No promises. But if you do want to follow along, you can do so on Instagram at Doug Polk Poker. I do want to talk for a moment about what it's like to play a tournament like this because I think for a lot of players out there, I'm sure you guys uh, hope that one day you'd be able to play something like this. And I think what makes it so different is that you you, you kind of know most everyone in the tournament. There are a few new names this year that I'm not familiar with, but you basically know all of the players. So um, there's a little more history. There's a little more, you kind of know the styles. Uh, I, I guess it's a little more like how, you know, in, in MMA, for example, you know kind of what style your opponent has coming into the ring. Um, so you can kind of counter them in different ways and, and different strategies. Uh, and, and the more in tune with that you are, the, the better I think it allows you to play in these fields, which is why a lot of these guys who have been grinding them constantly, I think are in a better spot than me, uh, having not played high rollers in some time since probably like last October when I played Poker Masters. They're probably all a little more in the know on what people are doing as well as what is the leading cutting edge strategies. Uh, and, and I will say, you know, it is a bit different coming into this as a player who's only played a few times this year uh, and playing something this high of stakes. I'm still very confident in my own game. Uh, I'm happy to have the opportunity. I'm really glad that I got one of the one of the spare seats. Uh, did I did not get selected in the lottery, so I had to rely on that to get into this field. But um, you know, it, it is a cool experience. It, it is, in, you know, right out of the get go, firsthand pictures everywhere, cameras all over the place. Uh, there's like a special players area. Uh, some people get like makeup done before they go out there to play. Um, you know, it's it's really high production. And, and what's really cool this year is it's going to be in the new room, is my understanding, at Aria. I think they built out like a new suite room for everyone to play in. So it should be at a different location. Definitely excited to see what that's all about. Uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's cool. It's it's a very different vibe out of the gate than most of the tournaments that you're used to playing. I'm sure if you guys have played tournaments at, a, at your local casino, you know that, you know, you start the tournament and there's nothing very spectacular going on. You get your starting chips and just good luck, right? And then as you get deep, some excitement starts building. Maybe uh, you get some updates online, maybe whatever. Uh, but, you know, it's not really out of the gate excitement. This one is kind of crazy in that, like, if you double up early, it's going to be a story. They're going to post a little hand history. There might be a video. When you get all in with your tournament life, they they film it, right? Um, I've unfortunately had to experience that early in this tournament several times. I've had bad results in this tournament for a few straight years. But that's the thing when it comes to tournaments. Like, you're never, like, 
you know, destined to be lucky or unlucky at one venue. Just because I busted this tournament three years in a row uh, doesn't mean that I'm going to do the same this time. I could. I'm most likely to, given only a, you know, few, a small percentage of people will end up cashing. But your luck can change, guys. Your luck can change, and hopefully it will this year. Um, I also think that I will say this. This is likely going to be one of my last high rollers that I play. I don't foresee myself being uh, too active in the high roller scene moving forward. Uh, I don't want to end up being just some middle-aged donk uh, losing money in these fields, um, which, you know, here's the thing. If you're not studying, you're not trying to stay ahead of the curve, then that can happen to you. And, and I don't really want to go that direction. Does it mean it's my last one? No. Uh, I'll definitely play some smaller six tournaments, some 10Ks, some whatever. Uh, I, and I might I might partake in this in the future, particularly just because this, this tournament is so awesome. So maybe I'm totally full of shit. Maybe I'll keep playing this every year. I really don't know. Uh, all I know is that right now I'm not playing as much poker, poker focusing a bit elsewhere. And we're getting a little off topic here. Anyway, bring it back on topic. I got to leave for R, you guys. I got two minutes. I will see you later. Check it out on Instagram. Peace.